much, huh? All right. Nice to see all of you here. Holy cow. Let's get this going here. Hot enough for you? Yes. Yes. Hello, Kristen. I just got to get a bulletin. Hold on. Bob Duda is playing for us today. Jarrett, uh, has, uh, Rosie is being baptized. And so, I think I have one. I think. Thanks. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. Oh, you have one? What? Do you have one? You give me mine? Well, I, yeah. I got it. Thanks. <laughs> I don't want you to be shorted. people on the stream that are signed in. I know there's a bunch more that like Janet Stitt is on, the Finleys are on. Uh, we worked with Donna Doig to get the sound back on over at the Partridge and Old Branch campus of the sanctuary. So welcome to everybody joining us from whatever means possible. Um, Want to let you know that things went very well last week. I went over to Daily Ridge to do some bapti uh, to baptism and new members and had a meal and that was a lot of fun. So we uh, were on, on the roll there and I'm back at Brick Chapel uh, this, today. The next two weeks I'll be on vacation. Reverend Vanessa Syverson, a child of this church, uh, will be preaching and leading worship uh, the next two Sundays and I'll be back after that. I think it's the 14th of August. So, so you've been warned. Are there announcements today? News you care to share? Yes, Bob. I'll repeat this as we're all here fanning ourselves this morning. Hello, Stace. Christmas Eve is five months from tonight. Thanks, Michelle, for being on the ball there. All right. Glad you're here. Let's join together and worship the Lord. Robert. Please stand. How, wait, wait. How was STEM camp? Was it? Did you survive? Natasha went away last week. It was good? All right. Woo! Stand up, please. Let's, let's do the call to worship. Ask. 
ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the doors will be opened to you. Come to praise the responsive love of God who meets us in our need where we are. Seek the Holy Spirit to guide and protect. God will give the Spirit to those who ask. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks this day for the glory of summer. We thank you for the presence of these folks here on the stream and also in the sanctuary. We ask that your Spirit Fill each of our hearts with your peace and your joy. Lead us into the future and through this day as we gather to celebrate and rejoice. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our first song is number 69. We're in the purple, uh, purple hymnal this morning. I, the Lord of sea and sky.
Let us remain standing and join together in the innocent prayer of confession in the bulletin. Let us pray. When we are in trouble, O Spirit God, draw us toward asking the right questions. Give us the courage to knock on the door and to keep knocking until the right door opens. Strengthen our resolve to search for you until we find you. Make us stubborn and persistent. In the name of Christ, amen. God sent Christ into our world not to condemn us, but to save us. And I say to all of us in the name of Christ that our sins are forgiven. Let's affirm our faith reading aloud the Apostles' Creed, and that can be found in the inside cover of any hymnal. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, it is now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Amen. God forgives us in Christ. Let us be forgiving of each other and ourselves. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Please be seated. Today's scripture reading is from Luke's Gospel. It's chapter 11, 1 through 13. Hear the word of the Lord. He was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. Jesus said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be thy name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us, and do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, let me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, do not bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is a friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he wants. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who seeks searches finds, and for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will you give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask God? Here ends the reading of the word. Robert?
seems that Bob and I are both kind of on the same page looking ahead too much. I, I know that Fire Prevention Week isn't until October, but it never hurts to review. So I'd like to take a minute this morning uh, to go over the fire safety technique which we teach to children and uh, emergency service personnel and industrial workers as a component of health and safety training, namely stop, drop, and roll. It involves three steps a fire victim should follow to minimize injury in the event their clothing catches on fire. First, stop. Cease any movement which may cause the fanning of the flames or hamper those attempting to put out the fire for you. Second, drop to the ground, uh, lying down if possible, covering your face with your hands in order to avoid any facial injuries. And third, roll. The victim must roll on the ground in effort to extinguish the flame by depriving it of oxygen. And if the person is on a rug or one is nearby, they can roll the rug around themselves to further extinguish the flame. Now, along with schoolhouse rock, the paper clip, and the alphabet, stop, drop, and roll is a simple but brilliant invention. Not all of you here today may know the conjunction junction song, do you? Conjunction junction, what's your function? Okay, good. You may, may or not know that, but I'll bet everyone here knows stop, drop, and roll, right? It's a huge marketing success. So let's all stand up, we're gonna practice. No, I'm kidding. Now the only problem with stop, drop, and roll, as useful as it may be, is we really don't get a whole lot of practice using it. And truth be told, we really never want to have any use for it at all, do we? Now down through history, there have been any number of inventions which have been fabulous, like stop, drop, and roll. And they're brilliant in their simplicity, but are much more frequent in their use or application. Things like fire itself, or language, or the pencil, or the cup, the staircase, the plow, soap, for those of you that went to camp this week, matches, the compass, eyeglasses, the zero, mathematically, and of course the biggie, toilet paper. Now these are things we use just about every day, and frankly, we couldn't imagine living without them. Simple, elegant solutions to very difficult challenges. I was up in my shop this past week building uh, things and doing projects. I made this little um, remote TV rack to put on the coffee table. I, every night before I go to bed, I have to take the TV rem or the stereo remote, the TV remote, and the Apple TV remote, and I've got to line them up parallel and perpendicular to the end of the table. And it's just costing me a lot of time. I know it's obsessive, but I make it work for me. So instead, I went up to the shop and I made this little oak tray that everything just fits into. When you slip them in there, they're all parallel, problem solved. I built a sunfish, a sunfish sailboat sled for my neighbors, had to finish that, and I'm doing some painting and stuff. But I was up there and I, I got to thinking. I got to thinking about all the very difficult challenges we face in our church. I got to thinking about all the difficult challenges we face in our schools and in our lives and across our nation and throughout the world. And I tell you, though I look over the various local and national news websites each day, and though I subscribe to the Plain Dealer and the North Country This Week papers, some days I can hardly stand to read very much of any of them. It isn't just one story or another that's particularly difficult, though there is that. It's the critical mass of bad news that seems to wash over us day after day. Now maybe it's an age thing. When we are young, we believe and operate, thankfully, on the assumption that we can change the world. As we mature, we accept the limits of what we cannot change or what cannot be changed. And we focus our efforts on whatever small areas of endeavor we deem to be changeable. When we get older, and I think I must be on the cusp of this. We simply hope that all this stuff that is seemingly impossible to change doesn't catch up with us. So, like I said, I got to thinking. 
about some kind of simple and elegant solution to the very difficult challenges which face us all. And while I was thinking of all this, <coughs> I happened to sit down to consider today's scripture reading from Luke 11 and what the Spirit might have in mind for me to say to you all today. So here in today's text, we find Jesus teaching the disciples what has come to be called the Lord's Prayer or the Our Father Prayer, and then telling the parable of the persistent friend. Now, the Lord's Prayer, as it's recorded in Luke, sounds a little different to our ears than what we are used to. It begins, rather surprisingly, with the words, Our Father. Not Lord, the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, not God most high, creator of heaven and earth, not our shield and the shield of our fathers, not the transcendent Lord of the heavens, but rather the Father who is close to us, like a father to his children. And this isn't just Jesus' Father, this is our Father, parent to all of God's children. Then the prayer continues with two petitions, which express a form of praise to God, which the Christian community utters in our capacity as the children of this Father. Neither of them expresses something that we can or are expected to bring about on our own. Rather, they are an assertion of an eschatological or end of time, future vision and hope that someday this will be so. First, may your name be sanctified. May the name of God be recognized as holy and so celebrated. Second, may your kingdom come. The faith community, the church, prays that God's reign over human life and existence will one day be achieved and established and brought to full realization. Next, Jesus teaches a triple petition, an asking for the things we most desire. Note, though rather than it's me asking, Jesus uses the first person plural, us. We aren't asking as individuals, we are asking as a community. Give us each day our daily bread. Each day that we pray, we ask only for that day's subsistence, what is necessary for existence, for survival. We are not praying to win the lottery. We are simply asking God to provide for this one day with no need for anything left over. Because tomorrow we will get up and pray this prayer all over again. Each day we pray for that day's portion. Then the prayer goes on. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. I actually like the translation, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, as it's a more active form of transgression. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. We state our attitude toward forgiveness. God's forgiveness cannot be expected if human forgiveness is withheld. And bring us not into the time of trial, meaning take it easy on us. May our lessons be only as hard as they must be in order for us to learn them, hopefully the first time. And all three of these petitions express not only a humble confidence and a reliance, but also a conviction that by praying this together as God's children, we will be heard by God, who is also our Father. And that's it. That's the whole prayer. None of that other stuff about delivering us from evil, or the kingdom, the glory, the honor forever and ever. This is the original version. This is just the basics. Though those later additions certainly give a, an admitted flow and zing to the prayer, we really miss something when we forget, as we often do, the parable which follows, which places an emphasis on the need for persistence in offering tireless daily prayer. Now, the Greek word Luke uses is commonly translated as persistent, but a better translation would be shameless. Shameless. 
The persistent or shameless neighbor is asking for help to feed an unexpected visitor. He searched his own house and has nothing to set before the guest. So now he starts knocking on the door and this neighbor keeps knocking and knocking and knocking until he eventually receives what is needed and requested. Now unfortunately for such a humble prayer, I've given you a rather convoluted explanation of that prayer, one that is neither simple or elegant. So what I'd like to leave you with is the stop, drop, and roll of the spiritual life. Ask, seek, and knock. As we look out on this world and our lives, we see many people devoting time and energy to technological advances, to political solutions, to diplomacy and social engineering, and that's great in order to help meet the challenges which confront us as a planet. But let us remember that we, as individuals and as a faith community in particular, have a very unique and equally important responsibility, though I would argue more important, in meeting these same challenges. Ask, seek, and knock. Ask that it may be given to us, or, and keep this in mind, ask that we may simply stumble upon it. Seek, look around, hunt for it, make the effort to find it, get off your fanny, and knock, being shamelessly direct in our asking. Unlike stop, drop, and roll of fire safety, ask, seek, and knock of the spiritual life is something we have cause to use all the time. It is the daily bread of our spiritual lives. It is something we need to practice, play with, get good at, and rely upon. Because my friends, my sisters, and brothers, on the journey of faith, my fellow children of God, ask, seek, and knock is the simplest and most brilliant solution to a world which seems to have caught on fire. It is something we need to use each day because, frankly, it's hard to imagine our world living much longer without it. So as you go from here today, remember, ask, seek, and knock, and remember the words of Christ. Ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds. For everyone who knocks, the door will be opened unto them. And the people are heard to say on a hot July Sunday morning, Amen. Amen. Sticky. Sticky, Bob. It's sticky. All right. Ritual of friendship. I'll let you know... Um, we were praying uh, during the week. Laura Gibson ended up with some heart issues and had a catheterization over in Plattsburgh, and she's home and doing better. So that's wonderful. Look at all these people on the stream. I love it. Carol O'Connor is here today. Hope everyone has found a way to cope with the heat. Yes, we just go to Bob Duda's. He's got all house central air. We just we've been over there, been over there all week with our pictures of lemonade. Galen Pletcher's on, the Parkers. Uh, July is hotter than a firecracker. Betsy Robinson, good morning. Jane Cable, Jane, are you? Good morning from Williamsburg, Virginia. Hey, you made it down there, okay, super. Um, any other things you care to be sharing, praying about? I know that um, Aubrey was away to camp this week too, right, Cameron? She had a, she had a couple of rough first couple days, but she got through. Uh, any word uh, from Hunter? Spe Hold on. We need the microphone. It could be close. <laughs> Her son is off, was off the boot camp here, right in the, the midst of the heat. Uh, yes. After 13 days of not even knowing if he had made it to base or was OK or any of that, so really top five worst experiences of our life. Um, we found out he's he got a call last Sunday, um, and he's doing well. He's very sore, <laughs> as can be expected, but he sounds happy. He sounds upbeat. 
Um, and we got a nice letter from him, him this week, and uh, he's, he's missing us all, which is to be expected. And Reverend Mike, this note is for you. Um, he has started going to church every Sunday to help lift his spirits. Right on. So, nothing there, like boot camp, a, make a believer out of you, right? <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> That's great. Oh, can we get it over here for Shirley? Oh, it's for, oh, did we, hold on. I didn't even look. Is it your birthday this week, Shirley? Oh, look at that. Tasha Bell, right. That's great. Lou Shepard, all right. Well, let's sing happy birthday to Shirley. She doesn't need the microphone then. Wait, who else is, okay. And then just to go through it, uh, Phil and, and Kelly have an uh, anniversary on Thursday, the brackets on Friday, and uh, Kate and John Smith. So let's sing happy birthday to Shirley. I'm ready. <laughs> oh, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Shirley. Happy birthday to you. So you had the family up, huh? Yeah, it's great to see you. Warms my heart. I was also speaking with Bill Webb, who had his birthday yesterday. He's 89. You can't beat that, can you? I don't. Really? You're, you're older than 89? You're 90? 91? You're 91. Are you really? Holy cow. Well, that, that means when I first got here, you were in your late 60s. That's incredible. What a journey we've been on. Are right, everyone else hanging there. The gauntlet has been thrown down. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Good for you. All right, any other? Anyone want to top that? All right. Um, are, are you doing something fun? Does anyone have tomatoes yet? Oh, Lou Shepard. Oh, his birthday is, he's 95. Are you on the stream, Lou? Thanks for the prayers and cards. My 95th is Saturday the 30th. See, there's a guy that just can't, he's got to top you, right? Like 91 wasn't impressive enough, the 95-year-old has to email in on Sunday morning. <laughs> I think it's wonderful that we have so many people that have had such a wonderful life. So that's great. All right. Anything else? Give me one fun thing you did this summer so far. Besides go to STEM camp. What? You forgot in that moment. Day camp? Was it good? Anyone else? Come on, fun, fun thing you're eating, an unusual food? Your brother's, brother-in-law's 70, 75th wedding? Oh, his birthday. Okay. Oh, you did say that. Okay, all right. That's great. That's great. Anything else? How about some of you kids? You do anything fun? No. Oh, what else you got, Wes? You went to the beach? Did you get sand in your trunks? And then in your bed that night? It's unavoidable. I don't get, you know, it's funny. We have, sometimes we have people that have rented at the lake and then they alternate and they go to the shore, or go to the beach, wherever that may be, New Jersey or Maryland or wherever, North Carolina. And, and I just don't, I mean, I understand the waves, I understand, the, but the sand makes me crazy, right? Makes me crazy. Nick, it's nice to see you're here. It's one less phone call I got to make this week. It's good. Glad you're still kicking. All right. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, we thank you for all these people today on the stream that have joined us. We thank you for all the people that have come here uh, today to be the church. We ask that you be mindful uh, to us that we might simply ask and seek and knock shamelessly for those things in our lives that we need. Today we offer up in prayer those in need, Karen and Bill Parker. We pray for Mary Kelly as she continues to recover, Jim Durham recovering from surgery. We are thankful that Jane Cable made it down to Virginia safely and has begun the new chapter in her life. We 
ask prayers for uh, Janice and baby Jane, or Janice Brown, Ella's, Anna Eller's mother, but also for Anna and baby Jane. We pray for Lou and for Shirley and for Bill, all celebrating birthdays. We pray for the Boswell family. We pray for Kenny Gibson. We ask her hands be upon Kristen and Sean. Prayers for Colleen, for Mitzi. We pray for Paul, for Raylene. We're mindful of the Basford and Rody families. We pray for Krista Lyon and her family, for Nick, for Glenn. We pray for Carolyn and her family, for Jody, uh, for her treatment. We ask for miracles there, and we pray for all those who are ill or in hospitals. We ask for those in nursing homes or in their own home. We pray for those serving our nation and their families in support of them. We ask these things in the name of your Son who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise God above the heavenly host, Creator Christ and Holy Ghost. Amen. Our last hymn is Seek Ye First. Obviously, it fits thematically with the text, but... Um, more to the point, this was a camp song that we used to sing when I was a kid. And with all these kids going off to camp, I will admit that I went into fourth grade to Camp Duffield, which, ironically, the director many years later was Linda Potter in a small circle grown, grown tighter. And I remember my mom packed all my clothes in individual bags, like Ziploc bags, and put them in there. And I remember the, the first thing that I went to camp with that, that day they dropped me off, I think it was like brown plaid pants and some kind of striped t-shirt, you know, some. <laughs> and when she picked me up a week later, I had exactly the same clothes on, and, uh, and all the other clothes were in the bag by themselves, and I was homesick the entire week, as I recall. So I certainly understand what it's like to go away, um, you know, for, for whatever reason, boot camp or STEM camp or uh, summer camp, and to have those feelings of homesickness. But it's important that we uh, stay there and keep working through them and come out the other side. So, 175, would you please stand? Seek ye first. Thank you. 
Now, when I was at camp, we always sang that as a round, so I, I need to try that with you. So this is going to be the first group. This is going to be the second group, okay? Can I get the first note? No? You don't have to play it. We're doing it in a round. Just give me the first note. Seek ye. You got to do it with me. Ready? Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Boo. <laughs> you, 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 uh, okay, so it's a round. So we're just going to do the first verse. So, no matter what they do, I, all right, let's switch it. Maybe, maybe they're not as talented a singing group. So you, you start, you start, and then you come in. Ready? Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek ye first the And all these things shall be added unto you. Allelu, allelu. All right, you pass. I understand. If, if there was a campfire, you'd probably do better. As you go from this place today, be filled with God's peace and hope. Remember to seek, ask, and knock. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you. Be gracious to you and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated for the post. Have a wonderful week, everybody. It's supposed to cool off, so just hang in there a couple days. Happy birthday to Shirley. All right. <laughs>